what happened to the Ark of the Covenant? Where has it gone? Was it destroyed or melted down for the gold by the Philistines or the Romans or the Vandals? Did Solomon give it away to the Queen of Shiva? Did the Vatican somehow end up with it? Or has it been hidden away somewhere safe with the intent of being miraculously revealed by God in the future so that it can be used again? Hi, I'm Jacob Evan, and today we are going to be looking at three historic stories regarding what happened to the Ark. Two of these stories are at least 2,000 years old, and one of them could be even older. So what is the Ark? It is sometimes just called the Ark, Ha'aron. It is called the Ark of the Pact, Aron Ha'edut, and this is sometimes translated as Ark of the Testimony, although Pact is likely a more correct translation. It is also called the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, Aron Brit Yahuwah, or Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, as per Numbers 1444. One of the most iconic modern depictions of the Ark would have to be the Indiana Jones movie about that very subject. Whenever the Nazis bring out the Ark and they bring out their fake high priest, a bunch of spirits start flying around and melt all of the bad guys in the movie like they were wax. It's understandable how the Ark could be conceived of as a sort of weapon, or a thing which could be used as a weapon, based upon some of the stories that appear in the Hebrew Bible, based upon some of the destruction or disasters connected either directly to it or peripherally to it like people dying that touch it or are near it, or fire coming forth from God and destroying people, and that may be connected with it. But whenever the Ark was made, it was not stated to be for any such use. Whenever it is described in Exodus 25, it says that God is going to meet with Moses there and speak to him. He is going to do this between the two Kerevim, which are over it, or between the two cherubs, as they are sometimes referred to now. And these cherubim, which were placed over the ark, were likely not winged children without clothes, but they were more likely some kind of animal-human hybrid creature instead. And between the cherubim is a place where God is often referred to as being near or inhabiting. This ark was treated with special reverence. It was not worshipped, but it is a ritual article which required utmost care, and it was commanded by God to be handled in a very specific way. Only certain people were allowed to see it, and only certain people were allowed to move it after it was covered with three coverings. And this was under penalty of death. Even the high priest, being Aaron the brother of Moses or his descendant, was not allowed to approach it except in certain ways and certain times, such as in the Day of Atonement ritual in Leviticus 16, also known as the Day of Covering, where he covers over all of the sins of Israel once a year as an everlasting commandment. The Ark was placed in the Holy of Holies in the Tent of Meeting, and it was covered by the curtain within the Tent of Meeting. This tent of meeting, also called the tabernacle, is the sacred holy structure of the commandments of God's law, and the ark is associated with it. The ark is a part of the tent of meeting complex, which is commanded in the law. A lot of people now have come to associate the ark with Solomon's temple and being placed inside the temple, but if you read the commandments of the law, that is not how it was originally done. Even though the Ark was associated with a specific place, and it had a specific careful way it had to be handled, at one point it basically disappears from mention in the Hebrew Bible. So this naturally leads to questions because it is such a significant article, and yet no one knows where it is. There is a lot of speculation about it, and people might say the Vatican must have it, or the Romans must have destroyed it, or people might wonder if maybe it was destroyed by Babylon, or maybe it even disappeared before that. That even leads into questions about counterfeit arcs, and whether every time the ark is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, is it even talking about the same ark? I want to share with you three old records which give a story regarding what happened to the ark. 
It is possible that none of these are correct, but it is also possible that all three of these might point to a truth. The first one is found in the book of 2 Maccabees. Some of the books of Maccabees appear in some Bibles, but they were removed from modern Protestant Bibles. That's not to say that it should or shouldn't be in there, but it just goes to show that not everyone agrees on which books are or are not considered biblical. In chapter 2 of 2 Maccabees, it describes a record regarding Jeremiah. This is not apparently in the book of Jeremiah itself, but it seems to refer to the same person. It says that he was warned by God, so he commanded that the tabernacle and the ark be taken with him to where he was going. This is conspicuous because beyond a certain point in the text, the tabernacle or the tent of meeting is not mentioned further in terms of what happened to it, especially after Solomon built his temple. As a reminder, the tabernacle or the tent of meeting is the place where the ark is supposed to be kept and placed. It's the commanded holy structure within the law. According to this record, which is referenced, Jeremiah and his associates hauled the tabernacle and the ark to the mountain from which Moses had seen the land. This is Mount Nebo, according to Deuteronomy 32.49, and it is located in modern-day Jordan, east of the modern state of Israel. When Jeremiah reached that mountain, it says he found a cave, and they hid the tabernacle, the ark, and the altar of incense. Some of Jeremiah's companions sought to mark the way so that they could find it later after they had sealed it up, but then they lost it. They could not find the cave again. It was at this point that Jeremiah told them that the place will be lost and will be unknown until God gathers his people together and shows them mercy. It says that at that time he will show them these things and the glory and the cloud will reappear. And this is the cloud which was over the tent of meeting and it shone bright like fire at night. So if this account is to be believed, then the ark was hidden about 2,600 years ago, and it was hidden in a cave in Mount Nebo. If this is true, then it will be a miraculous event which causes it and the tent of meeting to be found and revealed, and it will relate to the restoration of Israel, the regathering of all of the dispersed peoples including the lost tribes and including those that may have lost awareness of their ancestry today. This regathering is likely the single most prophesied of event in the text of what people call the Old Testament, and it is prophesied of in the law itself in Deuteronomy 30, that the people who have been scattered will be reassembled and that they will follow all of the law again. So it seems likely that if this account has any credibility, then the people probably would find out pretty quickly if the Ark were revealed and rediscovered. The second and third story I want to relate involves the Samaritans. Of course, everyone knows about the Good Samaritan story, and there is a remnant of them in that same area to this day. According to Jewish history, the Samaritans are descended from Babylonians and other peoples who were brought in when the northern tribes of Israel, also known as the Ten Lost Tribes, when they were conquered and exiled from the land. As the Samaritans entered the area, they were suddenly attacked by lions, and so they decided they needed to adopt the worship of the local god in order to prevent that from happening again. Some of the priests from the northern tribes of Israel were then sent to teach the Samaritans about the God of Israel. But they supposedly continued in polytheism. They did not truly follow the Torah and follow God. However, I think we should also consider that there are two sides to every story, at least two sides. According to the Samaritans themselves, they say they are largely descended from the northern tribes of Israel. They have traditions of being there since the early days. They believe in following the law, following the Torah. So I think we should consider both sides of the situation regarding the Samaritans. 
even if we were to assume that they are largely non-Israelite, even the Jewish side of the story says that there were Israelite priests who taught them, so they easily could have some credible traditions among them either way. So getting back to the Ark and where the Ark might have gone, let's get into the second version of events, which is from Josephus's Antiquities, Book 18, Chapter 4 and it occurs as he is describing some events relating to the Samaritans. This is a very short relating of a story, and it seems like some of the details may be mixed up, as we will see, but I wanted to point it out because it does relate to these two other stories, and soon that will become clear. There was a man who sought to deceive the masses, and he started telling the Samaritans that if they were to gather together on Mount Gerizim, and Mount Gerizim, in their view, is the holy place, then he would show them where Moses had hid the holy vessels under the mountain, and that would include the ark. So a group of Samaritans gathered together, and they went up armed toward Mount Gerizim, believing that this was going to take place, believing that the holy articles would be recovered. But Pilate, the Roman governor, interfered with that. Pilate's soldiers attacked them, and they either killed them or put them to flight and or captured them. So the Samaritans were unsuccessful in finding the Ark. This story by Josephus is a bit odd because, according to the biblical narrative, Moses did not make it to Mount Gerizim. He died before they crossed the Jordan, so he would not have been able to reach Mount Gerizim. So that part seems a bit questionable, and I don't know if that is just because maybe Josephus mixed up the story of whatever this false teacher or false prophet was claiming at the time, or if the alleged false one himself was teaching it that way. But there are some similarities with the previous story about Jeremiah, because there is a prophet who had hidden the holy articles in a mountain, in this case in Mount Gerizim instead of Nebo, and it was hidden for later revelation and later discovery of the holy articles, and that would include the Ark. So I want us to pay attention to these similarities and continue to do so as we go forward. And this leads into the third story of what happened to the Ark. And maybe this is what was actually being referred to in the Josephus account. This is a Samaritan account from their own sources, and the Samaritans do not rely on the books that go beyond the Pentateuch, or the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. They believe that those five books are the only holy books, and then they have some other books which are considered to be not on the same level as the law, and this includes the Samaritan Chronicles, which is also known as the Samaritan Book of Joshua. This goes far beyond the time of just Joshua. It extends into the time period of the Book of Judges and other later books. This book has a detailed record as to what happened to the Ark, and in terms of timeline, this takes place shortly after the time of Samson. In the Samaritan Chronicles, chapters 41 through 43, it describes this version of events. It says that the nations who were enemies to Israel decided that what they had to do in order to defeat Israel was to destroy them from within. And the way they would do that is by convincing them to stop believing in their God and to stop following his law. These nations sent people who had learned to perform signs which appeared to be miracles in order to sway the people. Of course, in the law, in Deuteronomy 13, signs and wonders are actually not enough to prove a prophet as true, but the people were likely not listening to the law at that point, just like people do not today when it comes to alleged prophets. Once these supposed miracle workers had wormed their way in with some of the people, they started creating more missionaries to convince the people to worship idols. This continued until it was prominent throughout the entire nation of Israel, and the leaders became, or had already become, corrupt in that they were either careless and negligent about the situation, or they were fearful about how other people would react to doing the right thing, or they were too blinded and preoccupied with their own position to do the right thing, to do the thing that was right, and to counteract the evil that was taking place. And after that was fully complete in some sense, it says that God became angry, 
such that he took away his presence. He took away the light that was associated with the holy place and the holy articles. Instead, a black cloud appeared within the tabernacle and spread throughout. The book says that this was the greatest disaster and like unto the event of Adam being evicted from the garden. With the removal of the light and the arrival of this darkness, the priest knew that God was angry with the people. So he took up the articles which had been made in the time of Moses, and he left the tabernacle with them, and he found a cave in Mount Gerizim that had been hidden until that day. And he hid everything he found within the tabernacle in that cave, and that would include the ark. He wrote upon the cave and marked the cave, and then he looked, and the signs were gone. The cave was gone. In response to this, they swore to commemorate the sorrow always until God's favor returns, and it is only he who knows when that will return. And the book goes on to explain that it was around this time that Eli, descendant of Itamar, set up his own sect and shrine in Shiloh and Shiloh, and there he built a replica of the Ten of Meeting and some of the articles of the Ten of Meeting there, possibly a counterfeit ark. And this is the priest described in the book of Samuel, Samuel the descendant of Korah. This is the place where all sorts of iniquity took place, and this is even admitted in the book of Samuel, the descendant of Korah itself. And I found it conspicuous that those things were able to take place at, supposedly, at the Ten of Meeting. And yet these evil priests were not struck dead over it in the way that Leviticus 10 describes two of the sons of Aaron being struck dead for offering the wrong kind of offering or in the way that Numbers 16 describes the congregation of Korah, the forefather of Samuel, being destroyed. So whether this story in the Samaritan Chronicle is entirely true or not, it seems plausible based upon that that at least the presence of God had been taken away by that point. Whether Eli in the beginning of Samuel was using a fake tabernacle and a fake ark or not may be another question. So we have three stories where the Ark and the articles associated with them, whether it be the entire tabernacle and tent of meeting, or whether it be the articles from the tent of meeting, we have two or three stories where they were hidden away, they were hidden away in a mountain, and then they disappeared. And then they are only going to be found in the future. So as you can see, these stories share some significant overlaps despite some of the differences. Was the ark hidden in a cave at Mount Nebo? Was it hidden in a cave at Mount Gerizim? Both of these stories have an indication that we are waiting on God to show his mercy again, to show his mercy to the people at large, to those that had turned away and been scattered throughout the nations as a result, to the dispersed of his people. Deuteronomy chapter 30 talks about this very situation. After the people have been thrown out of the land, after the people have done wrong and have received the punishment for it, they will eventually remember God. They will begin to remember what he set forth in the law of Moses, in the Torah. And it says the people will return to him and listen in his voice according to all which Moses commanded that day. You and your children in all of your heart and in all of your being. And then it says he will gather you from all of the nations and the people will return and they will obey his commandments. And it will happen because they are observing the commandments and the ritual laws in this scroll of the Torah. And in order for us to return to doing all of his commandments, especially all of his ritual commandments, the tent of meeting will either have to be found or rebuilt and the ark will either have to be found or rebuilt.